once upon a time, my dog Baxter was out on the ranch where we were out looking for cows. And we let him out and um, he was running around the prairie and uh, chasing after the cows and after the horse. And I was very upset because he might get hurt. And I was calling him and he just wouldn't come. He just was having too much fun running after the horse and putting himself in danger. So I was very upset and just by uh, chance that my niece was there and I told her, I says, uh, when that dog gets back, I'm going to beat that dog. And she tells me that, you know, if you beat that dog, when he comes back here, he'll never come back to you. Well, this is where the story starts. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, tell you about a, what a parable is. The definition of a parable is a noun. It's a simple story used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the Gospels. And there's always a moral to that story. And the parable that I want to share with you is the prodigal son. It could be the daughter, prodigal daughter. It doesn't have to be a son. Either one. But uh, it comes out of Luke chapter 15. And we're not going to... You, know, you all probably know the story. He, the son goes to his inheritance, goes to another country, and joins himself to other things. Uh, and uh, spends all the money, ends up broke, and slot in the pig pan. Finally, uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 17 is where we pick it up. He uh, comes to a census. It starts here. It says, But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hand servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Notice he's talking about the servants. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. But how can a son or a daughter be a hired servant? And verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. So he come back home. And uh, just to let you know that his father was constantly looking out for him and had probably had these binoculars looking, oh, where is my son? I know he's coming back. Coming. When is he coming back? But, and so it starts up here and he says, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Now this robe is a royal robe. The ring is a signet ring, and the sandals on his feet was very good shoes because uh, we being under grace get to wear shoes in the presence of God because we are his children. Bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found, and they began to be merry. So, just goes to, um, back to the story of my dog Baxter. He uh, came and uh, finally finished running around and uh, finally after whistling for him and calling him he finally came to me and I tell you that uh, I wasn't happy with him but when he came back I followed my niece my niece's uh, guidance and her uh, her wisdom and uh, I got him and I told him good Baxter he's a good dog and I pet him on the head and uh, scratched behind the ear and gave him a treat. And uh, 
now that uh, I'm bringing back to the house, because we're not always out at the ranch, he, uh, he uh, sometimes he gets out when some of my uh, family members come to visit and they leave the door open, he takes off. But I know that he goes to the apartments and there's a lot of uh, uh, outdoor grills over there that people cook outside and he goes sniffing around there to see if he can find any scraps of meat or whatever, food. And uh, so I know kind of where to look for him. And when I go over there and I call for him and he sees me, um, what does he do? He comes to me and I pet him and I say, good, Baxter. And I start walking back home with him and he can't uh, contain himself. He just races back home and gets back in the door before I can even get there. He's fast, very fast dog. And uh, so when I get in the house, I pet him on the head, give him a, tell him a good boy, and I give him a treat. And the dog loves me and I love him, and he's always coming to me. But that's how our Lord is. It's like when we go off doing our own thing without him, he's always waiting there for us with his arms wide open. And he's not there to discipline, he's not there to uh, uh, say terrible things about you or anything. He's there with open arms and just coming, please come back, and I'm going to. Uh, treat you good. Give you a pat on the head and scratch you behind the ear, just like my puppy Baxter. And so, the moral of the story is, do you know what it is? Um, the moral of the story is, be good to your dog, love your dog, be good to your parents, love your parents, and have a good relationship with your dog, and have a good relationship with your parents. And most of all, have, uh, be good to God and have a loving relationship with God, the Most High, the Creator of the Universe. And that, my friends, is a really good deal in life. If you take that, you can't beat it.